Hello and welcome back to JVCTR. For those that are new, my name is Johnny and today we're reviewing a Mark 7 Fiesta, a car that is somewhat close to my heart, but this time it's on steroids. You and I, we're always on the edge. We fight and make love at the same time. Would you break up just because I told you? Now, for those of you that watch my other videos, you may or may not know that I owned a Mark 7 for quite some years. In fact, I owned it for nearly four years, um, which for me is a bit of a landmark because prior to the Mark 7, I hadn't actually owned a car for longer than 18 months. I don't know what it was about the Mark 7, but it just seemed to tick all of my boxes. It was fun, it was practical, it was, it was just a, a, a joy. Um, I must admit, parting with it to get my Mark 8 was a little bit emotional. I, I do actually quite miss it, so today, I'm excited to be getting back in one. Although this one is tuned by Revo to 330 horsepower. Ugh. Um, so I guess the question that you all want answering is, is it fast? Oh my days, is it fast? <laughs> 330 horsepower, 330 foot-pound of torque in a car this small shouldn't happen but oh my god is it good now that we've answered the burning question and we know it's really fast what's behind all that power well put it this way you can't just strap a massive turbo onto this car and off you go there are a number of essential modifications you need to make in order to make it work now this particular car has revo's own open cone induction kit with piping that runs all the way around the top of the engine bay and that sorts of the air intake for the turbo down here you may just about be able to see the pro alloy logo so this particular car has their latest competition cooler which also integrates the crash bar that represents a significant wake saving and also allows them to put a massive intercooler that has a 62 mil core throughout all the way up the front of the car quite impressive the final essential mod to run big power is of course a turbo back exhaust system of sorts. This car is fitted with a Miltec turbo back exhaust system with a sports cat and combined with the Miltec non-resonated race back box. Now other modifications fitted to this car that are not essential when running big power but are highly recommended are a rear torque mount for the engine uh, which stops it twisting when you apply heavy load. Um, this is also on coilovers, ST suspension, um, which gives it a slightly more angry stance, improves handling, and to be honest, the way this has been set up, it's actually quite comfy. Now, the most notable option that you'll be able to see on this car is of course those massive Revo Alcon brakes on the front. The stopping power these have are pretty unbelievable, if I'm completely honest. And when you're running this kind of power, I would almost say these are an essential. Now, if you don't mind, I literally cannot wait to get behind the wheel of this thing. So I'll talk to you more about the package when we're on the road. Also worth noting that this car has a limited slip differential fitted too, which is almost essential when running this kind of power. Now, when it comes to the package as a whole, obviously the party piece is the hardware. So all the charge pipes and that awesome turbo which we'll get onto in a minute but what people overlook often is the software that goes alongside with it and Revo have done an awesome job on the software with this package now they've included a number of extra features which some are just cool nice to have um, and others are just there for your peace of mind really so the first one of which is the exhaust overrun, which you may or may not be able to hear now. Um, it's actually quite nice to listen to whilst it's just pootling around. Um, the second one is left foot braking for those of you who are track enthusiasts. Uh, the RPM limit has also been increased, which you don't really need on the road. But again, if you like track work, then that could be useful for you. Um, and lastly, and probably most importantly, they've added temperature protection, which means all that juicy hardware under your hood you, you know it's going to be safe. Um, so if anything gets too hot, it will just cut out and everything will be okay. So before we discuss Revo's next generation turbo, I wanted to start with a quick turbo anatomy lesson. So this is a stock KP39 turbo, which is found on the Mark 7 Fiesta ST as standard. Um, it's brand new actually, which is quite lucky to be honest. 
Um, so on this side, you've got your turbine. So this is where exhaust gases enter the turbo and power the compressor wheel, which is located on the other side. The compressor wheel takes in fresh air and then pressurizes it and then pushes it towards the engine inlet. The turbine and compressor wheel are then joined by a drive shaft, which is then hung on bearings and lubricated by this little section in the middle. And in a nutshell, that is turbos. Now, obviously these are quite complex beasts, but for the sake of consumers like you and I, uh, we can work off the principle that if you want more power of a turbo, you enlarge the turbine and the compressor wheel. So up until now, um, manufacturers of, and tuners of, of all kinds really have been uh, modifying this turbo in order to fit a larger turbine and larger compressor wheel. And that involves milling out the custom housing uh, of the compressor wheel uh, and also the custom housing of the turbine side as well. But unfortunately, there is only so much metal in this, which means really you can only produce 300 horsepower out of this um, before you run out of metal in the housing, to be honest. So that's Revo's first challenge. Now on their last turbo, they made a custom compressor housing, but left the standard turbine housing. Um, but for that extra 330 brake, they had to do something a bit special. So I have one of the new turbos here. <laughs> And as you can see, when you put it next to the stock one, there's quite a difference. So uh, let's just talk through the compressor housing. So this is not new. This is very similar to the one that was on the S242 turbo, which produced 300 horsepower. Um, as you can see, it's quite a cool piece of engineering and significantly larger than stock. Um, but the real magic happens when we turn it around. So that is the new custom turbine housing with the large turbine in it which you can probably see which is significantly larger than stock. Now I mentioned this is a KP39, this is not a KP39 so let me get rid of that. This is actually based on a K04 turbo which is used a lot in the VAG tuning world. Now the reason that Revo have done that is because of this center section here. Um, this allows for a larger drive shaft uh, and associated larger bearings and lubrication and stuff um, which essentially just means that this turbo is a whole lot more reliable than just bastardizing a KP39. So in a nutshell, that is Revo's new turbo. The 330R package comes with a number of additional components to ensure that the turbo functions as expected. Now namely, these are an enlarged elbow pipe, uh, charge pipes, and also a throttle pipe. And this is a throttle pipe here because it's quite an interesting piece. Um, this was actually found late in Revo's testing as to be a bit of a restriction for their new turbo. Uh, so they replaced what was there as standard uh, with this mantle bent piece of aluminium. Um, they've also welded on all the OE takeoffs uh, for your OE sensors. And yeah, it's quite a, quite a unique piece of kit. So with that, I, I get it. That's kind of specification overload. And it's all very interesting and well and good. but. The whole point of all this is to give you an awesome drive. So have Revo achieved that? So in terms of living with this car day to day, um, it's actually really nice to drive just pootling around. Um, you've got the lovely sounds of the spool of the turbo, which you may or may not be able to hear. Um, you can hear that exhaust overrun all the time and it sounds really nice, especially through that Miltec. And you just seem to sit on this sort of wave of torque between maybe 1500 RPM and maybe 3000 RPM. Um, and if you stick between that, it's, it is a really nice car just to sort of pootle around in. And then if you're bored of just pootling around, you go above 3000 RPM and it rips your face off. Oh my god, this thing is so fast, you have no idea. <laughs> but it makes for absolute hilarious fun. And at this point in the review, I gave up making a video and just enjoyed the car.
That is, until it turned me into a giggling wreck. Let's do something a bit more relaxing. Now the reason the Mark 7 Fiesta is so special to me is because it can do all the race car-y stuff at the weekends and then during the week and day to day it can do all the practical stuff too. So if you are going to modify this in any way, for me I feel it shouldn't impede at all on the ST's ability to do that because that is its party trick. So let's put it to the test and see if Revo have ruined this car or not. Well, they certainly haven't ruined that then. What about getting all your mates in the car? What's it like in the back then, Rob? Alright. Yeah, 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 it's all right. Never sat in the back of a car I guess it passes that test too then, which just goes to show exactly why I love the Mark 7 Fiesta ST. Now significantly improved by Revo. Before we go, I just want to say a massive thanks to SEC Performance in St Albans for lending me the car for the day. They have an online store selling all sorts of performance goodies for all makes and models. I'll leave a link to their store in the description below. And with that, I hope you enjoy this review and I'll catch you in the next one. I, I, I,